Many of you have been told that in order to be healthy, you need to stay away from processed foods. And to be honest, for a lot of you, this advice went in one ear and out the other. The reason why it didn't sink in, number one, is because you might not have a full understanding of the dangers of processed foods and why you should avoid them. And number two, in recent years, these foods which are chocked full of additives, preservatives, and artificial ingredients are taking over our food markets and grocery stores across the nation. Unfortunately, the consumption of these foods comes at a cost and there is a growing amount of evidence that suggests that eating ultra-processed foods is detrimental to our health. Hi, I'm Dr. Lindsay Marie. I'm a board-certified family medicine physician, and in today's video, I'm going to be breaking down this topic for you in detail. I'm going to be explaining exactly what ultra-processed foods are, why they are so dangerous, give you some examples of these types of foods, and provide healthy alternatives for you to eat instead. Let's get into it. So first of all, what are ultra-processed foods? Ultra-processed foods are a category of food products that undergo multiple processing steps and contain numerous additives and artificial substances. They often bear little resemblance to whole natural foods and are typically found in the form of packaged snacks, sugary beverages, fast food, and ready-to-eat meals. And there are five main reasons why these foods are harmful to our health, and the first one is that they are high in added sugars. Ultra-processed foods such as certain cereals and sodas are loaded with extra sugar, and this can lead to potential weight gain, obesity, and a higher risk of type 2 diabetes. Number two, these foods contain extra sodium. Specifically, more packaged foods, canned foods, and frozen dinners can contain a high amount of sodium, which can lead to cardiovascular disease and increased blood pressure. Number three, these foods are low in nutrients. Ultra-processed foods are very low in essential nutrients, such as fiber, vitamins, and minerals, leaving your body deprived of essential nourishment. Number four, ultra-processed foods contain artificial additives. Artificial additives include things like artificial colors, flavoring, preservatives, and a lot of these can be very detrimental to our health. In fact, these additives can be straight up toxic, and I have done a whole nother video on this topic, so if you haven't seen it yet, be sure to check out my video on Detox Your Body, where I go into detail about all of the various toxins in our foods and specifically how they affect our health and what diseases they can cause, including several cancers. And number five, ultra-processed foods are highly palatable, meaning they taste really good and you want to keep eating them. Food engineers have designed the food this way, making it easier to overconsume these foods, and that can lead to an increase in the amount of calories that you eat for the day, contributing to obesity and other unhealthy eating habits. By the way, if you are getting some value out of this information so far, make sure to hit the like button. The more likes this video receives, the more people can view it, and I want as many people to know about the dangers of ultra-processed foods as possible. So now we're just gonna go into some examples of ultra-processed foods. I have six that I'm going to share with you, and the first one is sugary cereals. You may have a box or two of these cereals in your pantry right now, but basically these are the cereals that contain a very high amount of sugar content, also colorful shapes and additive flavors. Example number two is fast foods, and this of course includes things like burgers, french fries, fried chicken, and other foods from your favorite fast food chains. Example number three is soft drinks. This includes sugar-sweetened sodas and energy drinks. Example number four is packaged snacks. Some examples are chips, crackers, and cookies, which are often loaded with artificial ingredients. Example number five is frozen dinners, and this includes microwavable meals that are high in sodium and artificial additives. Some of these meals even contain over 50 to 75% of your daily allotted sodium intake for the day. And lastly, example number six is processed meats. Processed meats usually include sausages, hot dogs, certain deli meats, salami, and pepperoni. These are filled with unhealthy fats and preservatives such as nitrites, which can lead to cancers and other diseases. And now I would just like to go over the various health risks that eating ultra-processed foods can lead to. We briefly mentioned a few of these while discussing what ultra-processed foods are, but now I would just like to give you a more concise list. So the first one is weight gain and obesity. As we mentioned before, these foods can be highly addictive and they contain a high amount of calories. 
So it's no surprise that eating these types of foods can lead to overeating and weight gain. The second health risk from eating ultra processed foods is heart disease. These foods contain tons of excess sodium and unhealthy fats, both of which can increase your blood pressure and increase your risk of heart disease. And just as an example of how sneaky these foods can be, I once had a patient who thought he was doing himself a favor by switching to drinking V8 drinks. I could have had a V8. Being advertised that it is a healthy drink containing many vegetables, he thought it was going to help him lose weight. In the end, he was drinking two to three cans of V8 juice per day, and when he came to see me in the clinic, his blood pressure was through the roof, almost to the level of an emergency. And when I had found out that he was drinking so many cans of V8 juice, I was able to contribute his high blood pressure to that and inform him that unfortunately, these drinks are very processed and contain high amounts of sodium, which can increase blood pressure. Health risk number three, is that ultra processed foods can lead to type 2 diabetes. Like we already discussed, many of these foods contain a high amount of sugar. Having a diet high not only in carbohydrates, but especially high in sugar can lead to something known as insulin resistance. Insulin resistance is one of the leading causes of type 2 diabetes, and many people can have it without knowing it, and they can also be in the range of having prediabetes. I have a whole nother video on this topic which discusses more in detail insulin resistance and certain foods that lead to prediabetes and diabetes. If you want to learn more on how to lower your blood sugars by avoiding certain foods in your diet, then be sure to check out that video. I will link it in the description box below. Health risk number four is ultra processed foods can lead to digestive problems. Oftentimes these foods contain a low amount of fiber and if you don't get enough fiber in your diet, you can have problems with your digestion or a slowed digestion. And this can lead to things like having constipation or even putting you at higher risk for colon cancer. Unfortunately, in recent years, we have been seeing a much higher incidence of colorectal cancers in both older patients and now younger patients as well. And a lot of that has to do with this epidemic of more and more ultra processed foods being available to people for them to consume. The last health risk to mention today, number five, is that ultra processed foods can affect your mental health. There is more emerging evidence now that these types of foods can lead to higher risks of depression and because these foods contain a high amount of chemicals, it may interact with your brain's normal neurotransmitters affecting your mood. All right, now we're moving on to the next part of the video where I want to give you guys multiple examples of healthy alternatives that you can choose to eat instead of choosing ultra processed foods in your diet. Full disclosure, I just wanted to mention that when I was going through my medical school training and my residency, I didn't have a lot of time to eat well and eat healthy alternatives. So I too was a victim of eating a lot of processed foods in my diet and knowing that it wasn't healthy for me. While working in urgent care, my shifts were usually really busy and I would only have about five to 10 minutes to sit down and eat during an entire 12 hour shift. So for those times, I would definitely grab a quick frozen dinner. Usually I got the ones that only required one minute to microwave and then I would eat them in five minutes. This became so much of a habit that even my coworkers started to notice and mention that I wasn't eating so healthy. And you know what? They were right. As a doctor, I was spending so much time telling others how to eat healthy that I wasn't even following my own advice. Like a lot of Americans with a busy schedule, I often chose foods that were more convenient and also even cheaper to eat. And unfortunately, as we have just seen, those foods aren't the best for us. But I'm happy to say that officially as of October 2022, which is actually just a little under a year ago, I have finally made the switch to eliminating most processed foods in my diet. I now choose to shop at Whole Foods and those are the types of foods that are going to be better for you and now i just wanted to go over a few of those examples so the first example of a healthy alternative food is of course going to be your fresh fruits and vegetables so you want to be opting for a variety of color within your fruits and your vegetables a lot of these would contain many antioxidants and also compounds known as polyphenols which are both healthy in preventing free radicals and oxidative stress within our body which can also prevent diseases and cancers and ideally if you can shop for more organic fruits and vegetables you can avoid excess chemicals and pesticides like I said earlier, for the past year or so, I have mainly shopped at Whole Foods Market, and one of my favorite parts of the shopping experiences is going into the fresh produce aisle. I love stocking up on extra spinach, avocados, especially tons of berries, and my favorite food to eat is cherry tomatoes, so I have tons of those. As you can see, I just have some avocados here with some lemon. I've got my raspberries that are almost half gone. 
Blueberries are my favorite berries. They taste so good. I can eat them plain most of the time. And if you didn't know, blueberries are actually considered the king antioxidant berry because they contain a high amount of antioxidants and they are especially good for brain health. And here is my tub of baby spinach. I usually buy it at every grocery store run. I like to cook it on the stove top and it's a tasty side to a lot of my meals. The next example of a healthy alternative is lean proteins. And this can include things like lean meats, poultry, fish, and other plant-based protein sources like beans or legumes. One of my favorite proteins to eat is ground turkey meat. I usually buy several packs of ground turkey at one time, and then when I come home, I'll usually just cook one of those for the week and I can do some meal prep with that. Again, it tastes really great along with my baby spinach and of course my cherry tomatoes, which I love. Another meal option that I like includes frozen baby shrimp, and I can cook a few of these at a time on the stovetop. I usually like adding them to salads and they are also a great source of lean proteins. Number three on the list of healthy alternatives is whole grains. Like we talked about on my previous video of how to lower blood sugars in general to be more healthy, you wanna avoid white breads and white pastas. So instead you can select things like whole grains, brown rice, quinoa, or whole wheat bread. They contain less refined sugars and oftentimes more fiber, which is healthier for your digestion. One of my favorite breads to eat is this one here. It's called Ezekiel bread. You may have heard of it before. It's actually advertised as a flourless bread and it is a low glycemic choice if you have diabetes or higher blood sugars. It's only 80 calories for one slice of bread. It contains no added sugars and it contains a higher amount of fiber. This bread is really tasty in the morning and it hits the spot. I usually just eat one slice and I will cut up some avocado and put that on my bread and have a beautiful avocado toast. All right, moving down the list, number four healthy alternative is nuts and seeds. Choosing a snack such as unsalted nuts or seeds can be a great way to add some extra protein in your diet and it contains those healthy fats. One of my favorite nuts includes pistachio nuts. These you can buy them in the shell or without the shell and they are also a great snack option. Again, I like to munch on these throughout the day sometimes or they are also really good to eat with cheese. Which brings us to healthy alternative number five and that is plain dairy. You wanna be choosing more plain yogurts, milks or cheeses and you wanna make sure that they don't contain extra sugars or additives. Healthy alternative number six is you wanna be limiting sugary drinks. Sugary drinks definitely include sodas, but also a lot of juices. A lot of juice comes from concentrate and is also not the best for you. People are also drinking iced coffees and energy drinks and even Gatorade, which has tons of sugar. Even diet sodas or zero sugar sodas are terrible for you because they contain fake sugars, which are also bad chemicals and can be toxic to our brains. So instead you wanna make it a goal to drink more water. You can also drink some herbal teas. And as I have mentioned in another previous video, another great alternative for soda is something known as kombucha. I have done a whole nother video about that drink, which is basically a fermented tea. And if you would like to learn about the five health benefits of kombucha, also check out this video right here. I'll link it below. And lastly, the seventh healthy alternative that I wanted to mention instead of eating ultra processed foods is to make sure you are doing some more home cooking. When you prepare meals at home, you tend to be using a lot more fresh ingredients and have a lot more control over what you eat. I have also enjoyed doing some more cooking at home instead of eating frozen dinners, and I have documented a few of those meals that I make. I make a variety of smoothies as well, and I have made some shorts videos on my meals and smoothies, so if you also wanna check those out, they'll be on my channel. All right, and that wraps up our discussion today on what ultra-processed foods are, why they are so dangerous, and hopefully providing you with some healthy food alternatives to eat instead. Please like, comment, and share this video with anyone who may benefit from this information. Once again, thanks for watching, and don't forget to subscribe as I am making new videos like these in the future based on wellness and nutrition. And until next time, bye!